The world driver standings do not make happy reading for Sir Lewis Hamilton at the moment. Last year at Imola, Max Verstappen made a daring move up the inside of Turn 1 on Lewis Hamilton that really set the tone for the rest of the season. While it was the beginning of a season-long battle last year, Max's pass of Lewis this year was a reminder to the seven-year world champion of just how far he is off the pace this year. Let's take a look at what happened at Imola and why Lewis struggled so much. The best snippet from Mercedes weekend in Imola is perhaps the team radio talk between Lewis Hamilton and Toto Wolff straight after the race. Wolff said, Hi Lewis, sorry for what you had to drive today. I know this is undrivable and not what we deserve to score as a result. This was a terrible race, we will come out of this. Hamilton replied, Yeah, no worries Toto, just keep on working hard. Toto Wolff calling the Mercedes undrivable seems a little excessive. It isn't like the car has been as bad as the Williams this season, and George Russell has actually been performing consistently over the opening four races. Toto clarified his post-race radio message to Hamilton, saying that it was prompted because he knew the team was letting its drivers down. It's just the car was undrivable in the way it was undrivable before, he said. You see the straights, the way it bounces on the main straight. I wonder how the two of them can even keep the car on the track at times. And Lewis deserves better from us, but we're a team, so we all need to do the utmost in order to provide him with a machine that is able to fight for front positions. You have to agree with Toto. The bouncing does look appalling, and it is incredible that either driver can put up with it for the whole race. But while Hamilton has really struggled with the car since the first race of the season, George Russell is actually performing better than he ever has before. Russell currently sits fourth in the World Drivers' Championship, with a third place finish, two fourth place finishes, and a fifth place finish. That kind of consistency is incredibly impressive for a driver who's just moved to the team from a Williams outfit that hasn't produced a competitive car in years. Russell has outdriven Hamilton in three of the four races this season. He outqualified Hamilton by 0.4 seconds on Friday and managed to hold his own in the sprint race to start Saturday's main event three places ahead of Lewis. Russell is 21 points ahead of his teammate in the Drivers' Championship. In terms of results, we're getting the most out of it, said Russell. It gives me and the team confidence that when the car improves, we'll get more points on the board. But we can't sustain this level of results if we don't improve the pace of the car. So if Russell is getting the most out of the car, why can't Lewis? Russell's superb start to the race did help. He went from 11th to 6th in the first lap and was then able to pass the Haas of Kevin Magnussen to go up to 5th. He then drove maturely and made the most of Charles Leclerc's spin late in the race to move to 4th, where he would stay until the chequered flag. Russell was porpoising badly all the race and had some interesting things to say about it after the race. This is the first weekend I've truly been struggling with my back and almost like chest pains from the severity of the bouncing. It's just what we have to do to go and do the fastest laps. George Russell, at 24 years old, is 13 years Hamilton's junior. If Russell is struggling with back pain, then who knows what Hamilton must be going through. 37-year-old Hamilton has been racing in Formula 1 since 2007. That amount of driving has a physical effect on your body. The drivers follow strict fitness plans and diets to ensure they stay in peak condition during the race season. But nonetheless, that level of bouncing and being shaking around is going to hurt more in your late 30s than your mid-20s. Perhaps part of Hamilton's issues is that the pain of driving the Mercedes car is just too great for him to bear, while Russell's younger body is able to cope a little better with it. The porpoising could be partly to blame for Hamilton's struggles, but as the professional he is, it's unlikely he'd let it slow him down on the racetrack. The reasons for Mercedes' struggles with porpoising are numerous and complex, but none of them explain why Hamilton is struggling so much for pace. As things stand, Lewis sits 7th in the World Drivers' Championship, 21 points behind his teammate and only 4 ahead of old teammate Valtteri Bottas, who will be keen to get one up over the Silver Arrows after being dropped by them last season. While the championship table makes for pretty bad reading if you're a Lewis Hamilton fan, there is some good news. The races that he hasn't performed well in have been influenced by some pretty poor luck, and with only four races gone, good and poor fortune have not had much of a chance to balance out. At Imola, Hamilton was stymied in qualifying by poorly timed red flags and rain, a result from which he struggled to recover. A month ago in Saudi Arabia, he gambled on his qualifying setup and it failed. Those two results aside, he's finished third and fourth in races where Russell finished fourth and third respectively. And it may continue like that. Mercedes are almost in desperation mode when it comes to finding answers to their problems and have often been running different setups on the two cars to try and find a solution to their issues. Some weekends, Russell will have the right one. Sometimes, it'll be Hamilton. It is said that we make our own luck though. At Imola, 
Russell was able to make use of a lap one melee caused by Daniel Ricciardo and Carlos Sainz, which was how he was able to gain so many positions in Imola. As it stands, Hamilton is going to have to start making some luck if he wants to be able to avoid losing to his teammate for the first time since Nico Rosberg fought off Lewis to win the World Drivers' Championship in 2016. Bad luck might be partly to blame so far, but at Imola, there were strategy errors that didn't help Hamilton. Former driver turned pundit Karun Chandhuk claimed it was an odd decision to bring Hamilton into the pits early earlier as the track dried. He said it was worth a chance, considering the seven-time champion was already running outside the points and didn't look like he was able to make the necessary moves to change that on the track. Everyone started the race on a set of the intermediate tyre, but conditions soon improved with a dry line forming. However, it appeared drivers were hesitant to make the switch to dry tyres. After concerns, more wet weather was on its way. Daniel Ricciardo was eventually the first one to make a stop and was followed by the majority of the field a lap later. Ricciardo had a damaged diffuser after his first lap tangle with Carlos Sainz so was unable to make use of the move, but Hamilton certainly could have. Posting on Twitter, Chandhook said, Very odd decision from Mercedes not to gamble on bringing Lewis in early for slicks. Seemed totally worth the chance, considering he was outside the points. Hamilton was running 10th before the stops, but dropped back three positions moments later. This was partly because Pierre Gasly and Alex Albon had pitted for softs a lap earlier and were able to make use of the fast lap. If Hamilton had been brave with his tyre decisions and pitted when the cars around him did, it was possible he could have jumped Lance Stroll and Yuki Tsunoda, who he was battling in the opening laps. This would have put him around 8th, which meant the Briton could have salvaged some points. Notably, this strategy would have also stopped him getting stuck behind Pierre Gasly, who he sat behind for much of the race. While Imola was full of bad decisions, bad luck and bad performances for Hamilton, there is some good news on the horizon. Team principal Toto Wolff thinks that upgrades that are being readied for the next race in Miami and Barcelona should be critical in allowing to run its car in a better configuration. We very much believe that the science we're putting in at the moment will help us to, in effect, run the car lower, he said. It is where we believe we have all the aerodynamic goodness, and we haven't been able to unlock it because of the bottoming of the car. If we're able to get on top of that, that means quite some lap time we can find. If not, we need to have another idea. Hamilton and Mercedes will be hoping that these new upgrades are just that, upgrades. As things stand, the team sit comfortably third in the Constructors' Championship, but with other teams around them improving each race and Hamilton having his worst season in over a decade, the team needs positive changes. Because if things don't start improving for the Silver Arrows, they might find themselves in a midfield dogfight come the end of the season. How did you rate Hamilton's performance at Imola? Do you think George Russell will continue to outperform Hamilton this season? Let us know in the comment section down below. And on your way out of our pit box, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that notification bell to be sure you don't miss out on any of our content. Till we see you next time, drive safe and bye bye.